You know, Little's Law is actually used quite often within both Lean and Six Sigma. It is used for value stream mapping. It is used for Kanban calculations. It is used for waiting lines in restaurants and theme parks. You name it. It is used a lot. So in this lecture, I'm going to explain to you what it is and how you can work with it. Let's have a look at what it is. This is Little's Law. As you can see, quite a simple function uh, consisting of just a couple of terms. It gives us L, the average number of items in a system. That system could be a restaurant, a factory, a plane, whatever. It gives us the average number of items in a system, and those items could be passengers, they could be units of raw material, they could be guests, whatever. It gives us the L, the average number of items in the system, as a function of lambda, which is the average arrival rate of those items in the system, and W, the average wait time in the system by those units of input. And again, those units of inputs could be raw material, they could be passengers, they could be guests, doesn't matter. Little's law must be applied in a so-called steady state system. Now, what is a steady state system? This is a steady state system. We have here a situations where raw material enter a system, and this system looks like a factory with three people working there, each doing a process, let's say subprocess A, B, and C. And the raw materials that enter all exit as finished goods. No raw material is lost within the system. No input is lost within the system. All input leads to an output, okay? Nothing is lost. So if these are, for instance, guests in your hotel instead of raw materials, then each guest that enters your hotel also exits your hotel. Quite a realistic assumption, right? It's not unrealistic that guests that enter your hotel at some point leave your hotel. If these are guests at a restaurant, when they enter the restaurant, they also exit the restaurant. When this assumption is met, then we refer to it as a steady state system. Now, as you can see, the steady state system is actually quite a realistic system. Most systems would be steady state. So that means that Little's law it can be applied with very realistic assumptions. Now, this is how Little's Law was defined by Professor Little. Lean professionals have rephrased it a little bit, and they rephrase it in something that we see here. They say Little's Law gives the relationship between WIP, which is work in process, lead time, which is defined as the time that passes from beginning to end of a process, and average customer rate. Let's have a look at how this, what we see here, relates to this. In this particular case, WIP, or work in process, refer to those units of inputs, for instance, unit 1, 2, and 3, that have not yet been converted into finished goods or outputs. They're still in the system. So when you see here WIP, that is actually nothing else than L, which is the average number of items in a system. It still has not left the system, so it's work in process. Remember, so WIP is just another way of referring to L. Lead time is defined as the time between the beginning and end of a process. Well, that can also be referred to as W, or average wait time in a system. So what we're actually doing here is just we rephrasing average waiting time in a system and replacing it by something that you know all too well, namely lead time. It was already explained in one of the previous lectures, all right? Finally, customer demand rate is actually another way of referring to lambda or average arrival rate. You might raise your eyebrows at this point and say, well, how do you rephrase average arrival rates of inputs in a system um, into customer demand rate? I will explain it to you. You see, in a steady state system, whatever enters the system or arrivals must also 
exit the system as a finished goods or a satisfied customer or whatever. So that means that arrival rate is exit rate. That is a steady state system. Within Lean, we produce based on a so-called pool production system, which means, remember this was already explained to you in one of the lectures, which means that something is only produced or something only exit the system when it is demanded by the customer, which means that the exit rate is defined by the customer demand. An exit rate is the same as arrival rate. We just explained it to you, eh? because the exit rate and the arrival rate are the same in a steady state system. So what we see here is that this relationship here can be also expressed in these terms, which is more familiar to Lean and Lean Six Sigma professionals. Little's Law is very, very robust. That's why I love using it, because it works very well in practice. It requires a steady state system, which is very realistic. It makes uh, no assumptions with regards to, for instance, the amount of sub-processes in the system. So if we have here, instead of three sub-processes, three people working, if we have rather two, no problem, Little's Law still holds. If we have four, no problem, Little's Law still holds. So it makes no assumptions with regard to the amount of uh, sub-processes in the system. Furthermore, it makes no assumptions with regard to the time interval that passes between the inputs arriving. So if this is a time frame, all right, and it does not matter whether the inputs arrive like this, with very short time uh, intervals between them, or whether they arrive like this, with quite long time intervals between them, does not matter. What matters is that each unit that enters the system also eventually exits the system. In other words, that it's a steady state system. That's what makes Little's Law so very, very robust. Now let's apply Little's Law. And uh, what we did is we did our best to come up with uh, problems here that are from practice. Of course, we changed the, the numbers to make calculations a little bit easier. The first one comes actually from customer service office or customer service department. And in this customer service department, what happened is that emails were sent with complaints, questions from customers. They were processed and then an answer to those emails was the output. Each email would be answered, okay? No email would be lost within the system, so it's a steady state system. On average, there were 100 emails inbox for every uh, customer service agent, and on average, 30 emails were answered uh, per day. Now, the question was, what was the average waiting time for a response? Okay, because you as a manager, you would like to know how long are my customers waiting for their complaint to be addressed, for their questions to be addressed, etc., etc. You want to measure whether that is acceptable or not acceptable. In this case, Little's Law was very helpful. How does Little's Law help? Well, let's have a look. Very simple. On average, we have 100 emails inbox. Okay, so that means here we have 100 units. So that is the average number of items in the system, L, is 100. And on average, 30 emails are answered per day. So the exit rate is 30 per day. And we know that the average arrival rate is the same as the average exit rate. I already explained it to you in a steady state system. This already applies. So lambda is so we have the following, we have L being 100 and lambda being 30, which means W is 100 whoop, divided by 30, which is 3 one third. Okay. And W is the average wait time in the system. So on average, an email waits three days and one third of a day for a response. Now, is that acceptable? That depends on your norms. 
For some companies, it might be acceptable. For others, it might not be acceptable. But the beauty of this law is that once you know that W is 3 and 1 third, and you want to bring it down, for instance, to 3, you know which levers you must pull. What can you manipulate in this function? Well, the function only contains three elements, so it's very, very straightforward what you must manipulate and to what extent in order to go from three one third to three or two or whatever you want. Now, the next problem is from the semiconductor industry. In the semiconductor industry, we built on these wafers, we built circuitry and then we have, they end up as finished goods and sold to a variety of other industries. Now in this particular case the factory could estimate the average customer demand as 500 wafers per day and the lead time being defined as the time that passes from beginning to end of a process as 0.5 days. So in this particular case average number of items in a system or average inventory level or WIP is the unknown factor. So we know lambda, we know W, and we would like to know L. Okay. Now lambda, average arrival rate or average exit rate is defined by the customer. Eh? When we're dealing with a pool production system, the customer determines when a finished good leaves the system. So the customer demand defines the exit rate and the exit rate is the arrival rate in a steady state system. This was already explained to you before. So a lambda is 500 because that's the average customer demand. Then we have W, which is the average wait time in a system, which is just the lead time or the time that passes from beginning to end of a process, which in this particular case is 0 0.5 days. So we have here times 0 0.5, which means that L is 250. So we have on average 250 items or whip or work in process in our system. Now remember, work in process or WIP is inventory and inventory is a form of waste. It is a form of muda. It ties in capital. We as lean and lean six sigma professionals, we want to bring down muda as much as possible. We want to bring down WIP as much as possible. We want to bring down 250 as much as possible. Now, the beauty of this law is, is that when we decide that we want to go from 250 to, for instance, 125, it's very clear which levers we have to pull. Look, the function only contains three elements. So if you want to manipulate something, all that you can manipulate is in the function. You also know how much you have to change the other variables to go from 250 to 125. We will make some exercises um, which we will upload as PDFs. Um, so you can practice this principle uh, as long as needed for you to become comfortable with the material. For now, thanks for your attention and have a lovely day wherever you are. Thanks.